Giveri is a very popular and authentic Kenyan dish. It's a mixture of beans and maize. The beauty of Giveri is that you can personalize it in any way that you want to suit your palate, making it as spicy or as rich as you wish. Now let's go to our ingredients. I used spring onions, tomatoes, carrots, ginger, garlic, red onions, dania or coriander, one large potato, hoho or green bell pepper, spinach, this is optional, you can either use cabbage or skumawiki, butter, cream, Beef stock, this is also optional. You can use water if you don't like beef stock. Mine is homemade. I just boiled some bit of beef, added a bit of salt and that was it. And this is my sunflower oil. And these are my beans and maize already pre-cooked. I prefer having my beans almost twice the amount of my maize. This is just how I prefer it. You can alter this ratio in any way that you want. If you prefer more maize, by all means have maize being more. Or you can have them in equal portions. Personalize your dish in any way that you'd like to. So now on to cooking. I had already preheated my sufuria. And to that I added my vegetable oil and butter. After which I added my onions, cook them for about uh, two minutes just for them to turn translucent. Before adding my garlic and ginger, which I also cooked for about a minute just for them to release their aroma and their oils. And then to this mixture I added my garam masala. I prefer having curry powder, but since I didn't have it on hand, I just used what I had, which is garam masala. And just a bit of turmeric for that earthy flavor and vibrant yellow color that it was going to add to my giveri. Remember, all the ingredients I'm using here are optional. The only thing that's mandatory for you to use is beans and maize. That is what makes giveri. And then I added my tomatoes that I had pureed. And this was followed by my beef chili cube. I prefer adding the one that has chili because of the added zinc. It just awakens the flavors in my sufuria. You can add plain beef cube or none at all. And then after that, I covered and left everything to simmer for about five minutes till the mixture reduced and thickened, as you can see here. At this point, I added my potatoes that I had diced into about one inch cubes. Covered again, left everything to simmer for about five or so minutes until the potatoes were just al dente. I didn't want them done completely. And then I added my carrots. And spinach. And then I covered the sufuria. Left everything to simmer. Just for the spinach to wilt. Because this makes it easier for me to incorporate everything together. So once my spinach had wilted slightly, I added my spring onions and the cream. Then I mixed everything together covered and left the food to simmer for about a minute just to remove the raw taste of the cream. This is when I added my beans and maize. And remember, I have been keeping my heat to a very low simmer.
At this point, I took my muiko, that is the wooden ladle, and I gently lifted the carrots and the potatoes from the bottom of the sufuria. I also made sure that all the maize and beans were covered with all the flavors that were already in the sufuria. And once I was satisfied with the way I had mixed everything in the sufuria, I added my beef stock a bit at a time until I was satisfied with the ratio of the gravy. If you like yours more soupy than mine, you can add more beef stock. If not, just leave it as it is. At this point, I seasoned my githeri with salt and black pepper. I had boiled my beans and maize without any salt. Then I covered and left everything to simmer for about 10 minutes for the beans and maize to absorb all the flavors and for the seasoning to penetrate all the way into the beans and the maize. Finally, I added my dania, that's the coriander, and the hoho, the green bell pepper. I let them warm through for about two minutes and then I turned off my heat. After that, I served my dish while it was still warm, garnished it with some dania, that's coriander, and spring onions. You can also squeeze fresh lemon juice onto your githeri. This will awaken and brighten all the flavors that are in your plates. So thank you so much for joining me on yet another authentic Kenyan dish. Please rate this video, share it with your friends, and keep it jikoni magic when next time we make another Kenyan dish. Thank you so much and goodbye.